Under the twilight casting the Cedar Rapids sky in shades of orange, Michael Young found refuge on the worn steps of his modest home, the abode he shared with his fragmented family. In his lap rested a violin as old as the untold stories of his family, its faded varnish and worn strings bearing witness to years of use and neglect. Tears welled in his eyes, struggling not to overflow, as he caressed the instrument with a mix of reverence and desperation. Why do you cry, Michael? Julie's soft voice cut through the silence, her presence almost as silent as the night breeze. Michael lifted his gaze, meeting his younger sister's eyes filled with concern. It's nothing, Julie, just, just silly thoughts, he replied, forcing a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Julie sat beside him, her shoulder touching his in a gesture of solidarity. I know it's not nothing. It's the violin, isn't it? They don't understand. But I do, Michael, I always do, she murmured, her voice laden with a maturity that belied her youth. Michael sighed, allowing himself a moment of vulnerability. It's hard, Julie. They see it, he gestured to the violin, as a waste of time, a distraction. But for me, it's my whole world. It's the only thing that makes me feel like I can be someone, that I can escape. Julie took his hand, intertwining her fingers with his. You already are someone, Michael. To me, you're everything. And one day they'll see. Everyone will. The whole world will see how special you are. And I'll be here, rooting for you, always. In that moment, under the slowly darkening sky, Michael felt a glimmer of hope. Beside Julie, he wasn't alone. Together they would face the world, armed with an old violin and unwavering love. And perhaps, just perhaps, that would be enough. On the outskirts of Cedar Rapids, the Young's home stood, weathered by time and adversity, a beacon of relentless struggle against the tide of poverty. Sarah Young, the family matriarch, was the embodiment of resilience. Every day, before the sun even rose, she set out for the first of her two jobs, leaving behind a house full of deferred dreams and heavy hearts. Her eyes, though marked by fatigue, shone with the determination to provide for her five children, a silent testament to unconditional love. You all need to help more around the house, Sarah would often say, her tone mixing hope and exhaustion. I can't do everything on my own. David, the father, was a shadow in the young's lives. His vices had turned him into a stranger in his own home, his presence more a reminder of the dreams the family had once shared. The rare times his voice echoed through the halls were marked by harsh words and empty promises. Michael looked at his mother, his heart heavy with pity and admiration. Mom, I'll try to get some work after school, he promised, a fervent desire to ease her burden shining in his eyes. Julie, meanwhile, remained Michael's beacon of hope, her innocence and love a constant reminder of what was pure and good. But when her eyes met those of her father or her older siblings, a shadow of resentment clouded them. They, who should have been her protectors and role models, had succumbed to the same destructive forces threatening to tear their family apart. Don't worry, Michael. We'll get through this together, Julie whispered, her hand finding his in a silent gesture of support. But in the silence of the night, while the house slept, Michael wondered if they could ever truly escape the cycle of despair that seemed destined to repeat. The promise of a different future, one where music and love could triumph over adversity, felt as distant as the stars twinkling above Cedar Rapids. In Cedar Rapids, in the small house of the Youngs, dreams seemed as distant as the stars in the night sky. For Michael, however, there was a dream that shone brighter, a burning desire that illuminated every dark corner of his reality to become a renowned musician. The violin, his constant companion and confidant, was more than an instrument. It was the extension of his soul, a priceless gift from his preschool teacher, Mrs. Ellis, who first recognized the spark of his passion for music. You have a gift, Michael, Mrs. Ellis had said, her eyes shining with the conviction of her words. This violin is yours now. Take good care of it, and it will open worlds to you. Michael's mother, Sarah, saw the light in her son's eyes whenever he played. She knew that music was more than a hobby for him. It was his vocation, his refuge. Michael, your music, it touches the soul, she would say, trying to offer some comfort. If there was a way, 
I would do everything to get you the best lessons, the best teachers. But reality was an abyss that stretched between Michael's dream and its realization. The young family struggled daily to keep the essentials, leaving luxuries like musical education in a realm of unfulfilled wishes. I know, Mom. I know you would if you could, Michael would respond, trying to conceal the twinge of disappointment in his voice. It doesn't matter. I'll keep practicing anyway. Someday, somehow, I'll make it. At night, under the dim glow of a lamp, Michael surrendered to music, allowing his notes to fill the small room. Each chord was a promise to himself, a silent vow that, despite everything, he would not give up on his dream. His determination was a beacon of hope, not just for himself, but for his entire family, who saw in his passion a possibility of transcendence, a glimpse of a future where the beauty of music could elevate their lives beyond the present adversities. Now tell us, if you were in Michael's place, would you give up on being a musician? Would you forget your dream? Or would you try to pursue it even in adversity? Do you believe he will succeed in becoming a known musician? Will the young family manage to have a better life? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. We want to hear your opinion. Within the walls of the Cedar Rapids School, a place that should have been a sanctuary of learning and growth, Michael Young often found himself navigating a turbulent sea of isolation and mockery. The hallway, filled with laughter and lively conversations, turned into a battlefield whenever he passed. His faithful violin slung over his shoulder, an instrument that bore the marks of time, worn and out of tune, but invaluable to him. It's Michael and his quarter-century companion, mocked Tyler, one of the most relentless classmates, his voice rising above the hallway buzz, drawing curious glances and malicious laughter. Are you going to play for us, maestro? Or cry while trying to tune it? Taunted another, as a circle of mockery formed around Michael. With every word, every laugh, Michael's heart grew heavier, but he held his violin closer, as if physical proximity could protect both the instrument and his spirit from verbal barbs. It was a painful ritual, finding his violin hidden in absurd places, inside lockers, behind trash cans, and even on the school roof on one memorably cruel occasion. Once, while retrieving it from a particularly malicious hiding spot, Michael noticed a loose, damaged string, a physical blow that hurt as much as the words. Why do they have to be so cruel? Michael muttered to himself as he attempted with trembling hands to repair the damage to his violin, each touch a reminder of his passion and the dreams he refused to abandon. Don't let them bring you down, Michael advised Mrs. Ellis, his music teacher and one of the few allies at school. Your talent and passion for music are worth more than any words they can throw at you. One day, they'll see. Michael smiled, grateful for the support. But deep down, he knew the road ahead would be lonely and arduous. However, he also knew that every note he played on his worn-out violin was a challenge to the world around him, a silent promise that, despite everything, he would not allow his music to be silenced. On a sunny afternoon, as Michael Young walked along the narrow, winding street bordering Cedar Rapids' local market, returning from school, his thoughts were immersed in the melody he had mentally composed, a melody he dreamed of playing perfectly on his violin. It was then that his eyes met those of an elderly lady, whose bent figure under the weight of several shopping bags painted a picture of determination and frailty. The lady, with her silver hair shining under the noonday sun and wrinkles telling stories of many summers and winters struggled to maintain balance, her trembling hands clutching the bag handles as if they were her only anchor in a stormy sea. Without hesitation, Michael approached, his heart moved by an impulse of kindness that had always guided his actions, despite the adversities he faced. May I help you with these bags, ma'am? He offered, his gentle smile attempting to convey comfort and reassurance. The lady looked at him surprised, her gray eyes shining with a mixture of relief and gratitude. Oh, young man, that would be wonderful. These years haven't been kind to my back, she replied, her voice carrying a soft accent and a warmth that embraced the heart. As Michael carried the groceries, he noticed the looks and heard the spiteful comments of passers-by. Look at the violinist turning into a porter, mocked a familiar voice filled with disdain. Others laughed 
finding it amusing to see someone who was often the target of their jokes in a position of humility and service. Michael, however, chose to ignore the voices, focusing on the task at hand. Don't mind them, he said to the lady, his tone firm yet gentle. What matters is helping those in need. Upon arriving at the lady's house, she thanked him with a smile that lit up her tired face. God bless you, young man. Your kindness is a rare treasure in this world. Michael smiled, feeling a wave of satisfaction for having done something good, something that transcended the pettiness and cynicism that often clouded the days. That day, as Michael helped the lady with her groceries, he could hardly imagine that this simple act of kindness would set him on a path crossed with destiny. The woman, known to the neighbors as Mrs. Helena, carried with her an aura of simplicity that revealed little about her true story. Beneath the surface of this modest appearance lay a life filled with melodies, harmonies, and a deep connection to the world of classical music. After thanking Michael, Mrs. Helena invited him into her home for a glass of lemonade, a gesture of gratitude for the help he had provided her. It was then that Michael noticed, for the first time, hints of the extraordinary life Mrs. Helena had lived. The walls of her living room were adorned with photographs of famous orchestras, autographed sheet music, and even a picture of her young, holding a violin with an expression of pure joy. Do you like music, young man? Mrs. Helena asked, observing Michael's gaze wandering around the room. Yes, very much, Michael replied, his voice filled with a mixture of surprise and admiration. I... I play the violin. Mrs. Helena smiled, a special gleam in her eyes. I used to play too many years ago. Music has been the great passion of my life, and for a while I had the opportunity to help young musicians achieve their dreams. Michael listened, fascinated, as Mrs. Helena shared stories of her life as a musician and patron of the arts. She spoke of concerts in grand halls, of talents discovered and nurtured, and of her unwavering belief in the transformative power of music. But why did you stop? Michael asked, curiosity overcoming his shyness. Mrs. Helena sighed, a shadow of sadness passing over her face. Life, my dear, it takes us down unexpected paths. But I see in your eyes the same passion that burned in my heart when I was young. Tell me, do you have dreams, Michael? Michael hesitated, then with a sigh shared his dream of becoming a renowned musician, despite the difficulties he faced. Mrs. Helena listened attentively, a plan beginning to form in her mind. Here was a young man with genuine talent and a kind heart, precisely the kind of artist she had always aspired to support. You know, Michael, she began, a firm determination in her voice, perhaps there is something I can do to help you achieve this dream. At that moment, a new door opened for Michael, not only to the world of classical music, but to a friendship that would transform his life in ways he could never have imagined. Mrs. Helena, beneath her simple appearance, was the key to a future filled with melodies, learning, and, above all, hope. That afternoon, as the sun began to set, painting the Cedar Rapids sky with shades of orange and pink, a new chapter unfolded in Michael's life. Mrs. Helena, deeply moved by Michael's story and raw talent, found herself faced with an opportunity to reignite the flame of her own passion for music by helping a promising young man achieve his aspirations. You know, Michael, Mrs. Helena began, her voice filled with warm determination. Music is a journey, not just of learning, but of discovery, and every artist deserves a guide who can help them navigate that journey. Michael looked at her, a mixture of hope and disbelief in his eyes. But I don't know if I can accept... It's not a matter of whether you can, but whether you deserve, Mrs. Helena interrupted with an encouraging smile. And I see in you a talent that deserves to be explored and nurtured. With that, Mrs. Helena in the following days took concrete steps to turn Michael's dream into reality. She introduced him to renowned music teachers in the area, masters who saw music not just as art, but as an expression of the soul. Moreover, she made it possible for him to attend classes that had previously been out of his reach, opening the doors to a world of knowledge and technique that he longed to explore. But the most symbolic and transformative gesture came when Mrs. Helena presented Michael with a new violin. It was not just any instrument, it was an exceptionally high-quality violin, carefully chosen to complement and enhance Michael's innate talent. 
This violin, she said as she handed the instrument to Michael, is more than wood and strings. It is a promise, a promise that with dedication and passion, there are no limits to what you can achieve. Michael, holding the new violin in his hands, felt a wave of emotions. Gratitude, joy, and a renewed sense of purpose filled his heart. I, I don't know how to thank you, he murmured, his voice choked with emotion. You don't need to thank me, Michael, Mrs. Helena replied, her eyes shining with tears of happiness. Just promise me that you will pursue your passion with all your heart, just as I did in my youth. At that moment, Michael knew that his life had changed forever. Thanks to Mrs. Helena's generosity and faith in his potential, he was now equipped to tread the path toward his dream of becoming a renowned musician. His talent, finally, had the chance to flourish. With the invaluable support of Mrs. Helena, the doors that once seemed sealed to Michael began to open one by one, revealing a path illuminated by the promise of a bright future in the world of music. Under the tutelage of teachers recommended by Mrs. Helena, Michael honed his technique and refined his talent in a way that just months before would have seemed a distant dream. His unwavering commitment and passion for music, fueled by Mrs. Helena's generous support, began to bear spectacular fruit. Are you ready, Michael? Mrs. Helena asked, moments before his first major performance at a local recital. Remember the music you play is a reflection of your soul. Let it speak for you. Michael, firmly holding the violin Mrs. Helena had given him, took a deep breath and nodded. I'm ready, and it's all thanks to you. As Michael began to perform in recitals and competitions, his stage presence and the emotional purity of his music captured the hearts and minds of the audience and judges alike. Each note played was a narrative of his journey, filled with challenges overcome and dreams pursued with determination. Victories began to accumulate, each award and recognition serving as a testament to his talent and dedication. With the money earned from these achievements, Michael saw an opportunity not only to advance his career, but also to change his family's life. He approached his mother and sister, Julie, with a plan. Mom, Julie, I want us to start anew, Michael said, his voice full of hope. Away from the hardships we've faced here, away from the negative influence of dad and my brothers. His mother, tears in her eyes, embraced Michael and Julie. My son, your kindness and talent are a gift. I'm so proud of you. With the prize money, Michael was able to rent a modest yet comfortable house in a quiet neighborhood, far from the adversities of the past. The change was not only physical but also symbolic, marking the beginning of a new life for Michael, his mother, and Julie. A life where music, hope, and love formed the pillars of their existence. Michael, you've given us a fresh start, Julie said, smiling as she arranged her room in the new house. You're our hero. Michael looked out the window of his new home, contemplating the horizon. He knew the challenges were not over, but with Mrs. Helena's support, his family's love, and his music as his guide, he was ready to face whatever lay ahead. The negative influence of his father and brothers had been replaced by a new hope, and Michael was determined to build a bright future for himself and those he loved. As the years passed, Michael's trajectory unfolded like a meticulously composed symphony, each movement more thrilling than the last. Mrs. Helena's generosity and faith in his potential, combined with his unwavering determination, had paved the way for a remarkable transformation in his life and that of his family. From humble beginnings in Cedar Rapids, Michael emerged not only as a talented violinist, but as a rising star in the firmament of classical music. You're packing then? Mrs. Helena asked, her voice choked with emotion as she watched Michael carefully pack his violin and sheet music into a suitcase. Yes, it's time to go, Michael replied, looking around the room that had been his sanctuary of music and dreams for so many years. Thanks to you, Mrs. Helena, I have this incredible opportunity to study at one of the world's most renowned conservatories. Mrs. Helena smiled, pride and joy lighting up her face. Since I first saw you, I knew you were destined for great things, Michael. Remember, the music you share with the world is a reflection of your soul. Continue to play with passion and truth. Michael's success not only lifted his own spirits, but transformed his family's life in ways he had only dared to dream. His mother and sister, Julie, now living in a safe and loving environment, 
flourished under the new reality that Michael had created for them. The negative influence that once cast as the years passed, Michael's trajectory unfolded like a meticulously composed symphony, each movement more thrilling than the last. Mrs. Helena's generosity and faith in his potential, combined with his unwavering determination, had paved the way for a remarkable transformation in his life and that of his family. From humble beginnings in Cedar Rapids, Michael emerged not only as a talented violinist, but as a rising star in the firmament of classical music. You're packing then? Mrs. Helena asked, her voice choked with emotion, as she watched Michael carefully pack his violin and sheet music into a suitcase. Yes, it's time to go, Michael replied, looking around the room that had been his sanctuary of music and dreams for so many years. Thanks to you, Mrs. Helena, I have this incredible opportunity to study at one of the world's most renowned conservatories. Mrs. Helena smiled, pride and joy lighting up her face. Since I first saw you, I knew you were destined for great things, Michael. Remember, the music you share with the world is a ref Every note Michael played, every melody he composed, was an expression of his journey. A journey of overcoming, of love for music, and of eternal gratitude to the one who believed in him when few did. Mrs. Helena, even from a distance, remained his greatest inspiration. A constant reminder that, with faith and determination, the most impossible dreams can come true. As Michael settled on the balcony of his new residence, a modest apartment near the conservatory, he couldn't help but reflect on the extraordinary journey that had brought him to this moment. The horizon before him was bathed in twilight, each emerging star in the night sky seeming to shine in celebration of his promising future. His mind, usually focused on the complexities and technique of music, allowed itself in that moment to wander through the infinite possibilities unfolding before him. I wonder what Mrs. Helena would say if she could see me now, Michael murmured to himself, an affectionate smile lighting up his face as he thought of the woman who had been the matriarch of his second family, the mentor who had recognized and nurtured his talent from the beginning. Michael, my dear, the future is a blank canvas and you hold the colors to paint it, he imagined Mrs. Helena saying, her words always filled with wisdom and encouragement. His skill in the violin, once just a distant dream fueled by a worn-out violin and many hours of solitary practice, was now the key that opened doors to prestigious concert halls, collaborations with renowned musicians, and opportunities to bring his music to corners of the world he had never imagined reaching. But it was his generosity, the same that had led him to reach out to Mrs. Helena on that fateful day, that truly defined his character and shaped his destiny. Music. It has that power, doesn't it? To transform, to heal, to unite, Michael reflected aloud, remembering the countless times his music had touched the hearts of those who listened, bringing a moment of peace, a pause in the storm of their daily lives. It was this ability to impact people's lives so deeply that fueled his passion and determination to move forward, to explore new compositions, new techniques, and new worlds. Michael's journey in music although already marked by remarkable achievements, was only just beginning. He knew that each note he played, each melody he created, was a step toward a future filled with even more accomplishments. The future, it truly is full of possibilities, Michael said, allowing himself a moment of contemplation before rising, determined. With the violin in his hands, he knew that each string played, each perfect chord, was an echo of his journey thus far, and a prelude to the wonders yet to come. His story was a symphony in the making, a masterpiece in progress, and he was only beginning to compose the next movements of this extraordinary musical piece called Life. Thank you for joining us on this journey through this tale. Subscribe for more stories and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. Best wishes and until next time.